My name is Lauren, and from the very beginning, my life has been shaped by other people's choices. My mom had me when she was young, right after high school. She married my dad, Scott, not long after graduation. They were two kids in love, more concerned with each other than with building a future. At first, things were okay. We lived in a small house, and my earliest memories are filled with laughter and simple moments. My dad teaching me to ride a bike, my mom baking cookies on Sunday afternoons. But as time passed, things between my parents changed. They didn't argue much in front of me, but I could feel the distance. The love that had once brought them together wasn't enough to hold everything else together. Money was tight, and as a little girl, I didn't understand what that meant, only that it caused my mom to worry and my dad to be more absent, working longer hours. It wasn't long before someone else entered the picture, Kyle. He was everything my dad wasn't. He had a sleek car, expensive clothes, and an air of confidence that caught my mom's attention. Before I knew it, she had left my dad and taken me with her, moving in with Kyle without looking back. I was too young to understand why my world had changed so drastically, but I remember the sadness in my dad's eyes when we said goodbye. At first, life with Kyle was exciting. He'd bring me gifts, small tokens like a shiny new toy or a chocolate bar, and let me play in his grand office filled with expensive gadgets. My mom seemed happier, more alive, but there was always something off. Slowly, I began to notice how differently she acted around Kyle compared to how she had been with my dad. She wasn't the same person anymore, and around me, she became colder, more distant. I remember one evening vividly. I was supposed to be watching TV, but I overheard them talking in the kitchen. She's too much like Scott, my mom said, her voice sharp and full of frustration, always asking questions, always reminding me of him. I didn't understand then, but it hurt deeply to know my mom resented me for resembling my dad. I loved my dad. He was the one person who made me feel safe, like I mattered. Life with my dad had always been simple, but full of joy. He lived in a small apartment on the other side of town. Every other weekend, I'd visit him, and no matter what we did, whether it was playing at the park or sharing a pizza, it was always fun. He made me feel seen and important. He'd praise my drawings, encourage me to do my best in school, and always tell me, you're doing great, Lauren. It was the complete opposite of life with my mom and Kyle. As I got older, the tension at my mom's house grew. Kyle wasn't unkind, but he was indifferent. He never showed the same interest in me that he had in the beginning, and my mom's resentment only deepened. She became more focused on appearances, how I looked, who I hung out with, and whether I fit into the perfect image she was trying to project. Why can't you dress like Karen's daughter, she'd ask, holding up pictures of girls at parties I wasn't invited to. One day, after she scolded me for tracking mud into the house, something inside me snapped. At least Dad doesn't yell about a little dirt, I muttered, my frustration bubbling to the surface. Before I could react, her hand came down hard across my face, the sting shocking me into silence. Don't talk about your father like that, she hissed, her face close to mine, her breath smelling of coffee and something sour. I fought back the tears, remembering how my dad always told me to stay strong. That night, lying in bed, I made a promise to myself. I wouldn't cry in front of her again. I wouldn't give her the satisfaction of seeing how much she hurt me. But inside, the wound festered. I longed for the days when it had just been me and my dad, even if life was simpler and harder back then. Things got even more complicated when my mom announced she was pregnant with Kyle's baby. The news should have made the house feel joyous, but instead, it felt like everything was about to change, and not for the better. My mom had that pregnancy glow people always talk about, but none of it was directed at me. One evening, as she and Kyle discussed plans for the nursery, I realized they were talking about my room. You can move into the smaller room, Lauren, my mom said, her tone making it clear there was no point in arguing. It's only fair. I moved into the tiny room, packing up my things and squeezing them into the closet-sized space. It was a clear message. I no longer belonged in their world. The baby would be their new beginning, and I was a reminder of the life my mom wanted to forget. Time passed, and soon, 
Mary was born. She was perfect. Everyone said so. My mom cradled her like she was the most precious thing in the world, cooing over her every little move. It was hard not to love Mary. She was adorable, and I wanted to be a good big sister. One afternoon, while my mom was busy in the kitchen, I snuck into Mary's room. She was lying in her crib, gurgling happily. I tiptoed over and whispered, Hey there, Mary, reaching out to touch her tiny hand. But before I could enjoy the moment, my mom appeared in the doorway, her voice sharp as a knife. What are you doing, Lauren? I told you to ask before going in here. I tried to explain, but the sting of her disapproval was all too familiar. I didn't understand why she was so protective of Mary, like she thought I might harm her somehow. When I talked to my dad about it during one of our weekends together, he listened carefully. We were sitting in our favorite pizza place, the smell of pepperoni and melted cheese filling the air. Mom's always on edge around Mary, I said, picking at my food. It's like she thinks I'll break her. Dad leaned back in his chair, thinking. Some people have a hard time sharing love, Lauren, he said finally. They think there's only so much to go around, but that's not true. You've got a big heart. Don't let your mom's behavior make you think otherwise. His words helped, but when I returned to my mom's house, the distance between us only grew. I tried to talk to her, to share stories about school or my friends, but her attention was always split between me and Mary. It was like I was a ghost, a shadow in the background of her new life. One day, I came home from school with a second place award from the science fair. I was so proud of myself, clutching the certificate like it was a golden ticket to their approval. Look, Mom, I won this, I said, holding it out to her. She glanced up from feeding Mary and barely nodded. That's nice, dear. Put it on the fridge or something, she said, her voice flat and uninterested. The words stung. I taped the certificate to the fridge, feeling invisible once again. By the time I reached high school, things were bad at home. My mom's coldness and Kyle's indifference made me feel like a stranger in my own house. And then, one night during dinner, my mom dropped the bombshell. Kyle was working late and Mary was already in bed. It was just the two of us at the table, a rare moment of quiet. Lauren, we need to talk about your future, she said, pushing her food around on her plate without looking at me. My heart sank. I could feel something bad coming, but I tried to stay calm. What about it? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. We've been talking, and we think it's best if you move in with your father, she said, her tone businesslike and cold. With the new baby coming, things here are getting complicated. There's not enough space for everyone, and financially, it's becoming a burden. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Move in with Dad? I choked out, my throat tightening. But why? I thought everything was fine here. Mom sighed, clearly impatient. Look, Lauren, you're not a child anymore. You need your own space, and we can't provide that here. It's better for everyone if you go live with your father. I pushed my plate away, no longer hungry. What about school? My friends? You can go to a new school and make new friends, she said, as if it were that simple. As if erasing my life and starting over was no big deal. The next few weeks passed in a blur. I packed up my things stuffing my whole world into boxes. Kyle barely said goodbye, and Mary, too young to understand, gave me a confused hug. Moving day was tough. When I arrived at Dad's apartment, he was waiting for me with open arms. His small place was cluttered with memories of our old life, but it was clean and cozy. My new room was even smaller than the one I'd left behind, with peeling paint and a window that looked out onto a brick wall. But it was quiet, and Dad was trying his best to make me feel at home. School, however, was a different story. Walking through the crowded hallways of my new high school, I felt everyone's eyes on me. I was the new girl, and no one let me forget it. I kept my head down, scribbling in my notebook during class, and left as soon as the bell rang. Dad could tell I was struggling. One night after school, he asked, How's it going, kiddo? It's fine, I lied, dropping my backpack by the door. If it gets tough, you can tell me he said, his voice gentle. We're in this together. You're not alone, Lauren. His words meant the world to me, but the loneliness I felt was still there, gnawing at me. I missed my old life, even with all its problems, but I knew if I didn't pull myself together, 
things would only get worse. One morning, I woke up, looked around my cramped room, and decided enough was enough. No one else was going to fix my life for me. I had to take control. Dad noticed the change almost immediately. Over breakfast one day, he looked up from his coffee and said, You're looking more determined these days. What's on your mind? I want to make something of myself, Dad, I said, stirring my cereal. I don't want to end up stuck, you know. He nodded, his face serious. I hear you. So what's the plan? That scholarship, the big one for top students, I said, more to convince myself than him. I'm going to get it. Dad smiled, and that was all the encouragement I needed. From that moment on, I threw myself into school. I spent long hours catching up on everything I'd missed and even longer nights studying. My teachers noticed the change, and even the tough ones started respecting my efforts. Mr. Jeremy, my math teacher, pulled me aside after class one day. Lauren, your work has improved a lot, he said, studying me closely. What's driving this? I need that scholarship, I replied bluntly, packing up my books. I've got plans, and they don't include being stuck here forever. He nodded thoughtfully. Well, keep at it. Let me know if you need extra help. I'm here. As time passed, I started making a few friends, Linda and Peter. They weren't popular, but they were kind, and they made me laugh during lunch breaks. One day, Peter joked, So, Lauren, you're like a library ninja now, huh? I smiled for the first time in what felt like forever. Yeah, got to be stealthy if I want the best study spots, Linda chimed in, her voice soft but sincere. It's cool what you're doing, Lauren. Most people wouldn't bother. The days turned into months, and the pressure of the scholarship deadline loomed closer. Dad was my rock, always there with a hot meal and a listening ear when the stress became too much. Finally, the letter arrived. My hands shook as I tore it open, and when I read the words, I screamed. I got it, Dad! I got it! Dad hugged me tight, laughing as I waved the letter in the air like a victory flag. I knew you could do it, kiddo, he said, beaming with pride. As I packed for college, I felt ready for the future. For the first time, it felt like my life was truly my own. I graduated with honors and started building a successful career. At 25, I was thriving at work and dating Eric, a guy who was supportive in every way. But just as things were going well, my mom called. After years of barely speaking, she suddenly wanted something. Lauren, your sister Mary is going to college in your city. We think she should stay with you, she said making it sound more like a demand than a request. I hesitated, but part of me wanted to believe things could be different this time. Okay, Mom, I said, trying to keep my doubts hidden. I'll help Mary out. Mary moved in a few weeks later, and it didn't take long for old patterns to resurface. She was still stunning, still obsessed with her looks, and still living a high-maintenance lifestyle. I tried to be patient, but it was hard. She'd stay out all night partying and coming home just as I was getting ready for work. One night, Eric came over while Mary was getting ready for another night out. I noticed how she smiled at him, just a little too sweetly and for a little too long. After she left, Eric turned to me and said, Lauren, I think Mary's getting the wrong idea. She's been, well, flirty. I felt a mix of anger and embarrassment. Thanks for telling me, I said, my voice tight. I'll talk to her. When I confronted Mary, she just laughed it off. Oh, come on, Lauren. I'm just being friendly. Besides, can I help it if he likes me back? Her words cut deep, and I knew I couldn't live like this. You need to find another place to stay, I said firmly. This isn't working. Mary stormed out, slamming the door behind her, and within an hour, my mom called. You're so jealous of your sister, she shouted. You can't stand to see her happy. But I held my ground. I just want respect, Mom. That's all. After that, things went quiet between me and Mary. She dropped out of college and drifted through her social circles while I focused on my life with Eric. We got engaged, and our wedding was simple but filled with love. Dad walked me down the aisle, and for the first time in years, I felt surrounded by people who cared for me, genuinely cared. Then, out of the blue, my mom called again. 
This time, she was desperate. Kyle's business had failed, and Mary's marriage had fallen apart. They had nowhere to go. We need a place to stay, she said, her voice laced with panic. But I didn't cave. You can't just decide to move in with us, Mom, I said. When she tried to guilt me, I stood firm. You pushed me out when I needed you most. Now I'm putting my family first. After that final call, I knew I was done trying to please her. I was finally at peace. I had built a life filled with love, with Eric and our baby on the way. As I stood in the nursery folding baby clothes, I smiled. I had overcome so much to get here, and now my future was bright 